What is going on Diablo 2 fans? Dobrunski here. Today I'm going to be breaking down my favorite melee character in Diablo 2. That is of course the Fear Druid. Now, in my opinion, the Fear Druid is one of the most undervalued and underappreciated builds in the game. There's actually a lot of really interesting key core mechanics that make it a lot different than your traditional melee builds, which I will cover uh, kind of start of the video before we dive into the rest of the breakdown. But with that being said, like all of my previous build videos, timestamps will be in the description. So if you guys want to bounce back and forth between the attributes, gear, uh, skill tree, or the gameplay, they're there for you guys to use. So please take advantage of them. Uh, with that being said, uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's jump in. The first key component that I want to talk about is increased attack speed and how it determines attack speed frames for the Fury Druid specifically. Similar to the Whirlwind Barb, increased attack speed only on your weapon is going to determine your IS frames. Now it is true that in some very niche scenarios, like if you're attacking with an extremely slow weapon and you're frozen or decrepified, some offhand IS will help. But in 99% of most PVM scenarios, you only need to worry about your increased attack speed on the weapon to help determine those attack speed frames. Now with that being said, it is true that items like High Lords and Lang of Hands are top tier weapons for this build, but the IAS on them is basically useless. That's not saying that the ED or Deadly Strike on them is not beneficial, but uh, the thing that makes the Fury Dude unique is that only the IS on the weapon is going to help achieve higher attack speed frame breakpoints. That's why a lot of the specific top tier weapons for a Fury Dude are different than your normal meta weapon choices for other melee builds. So items like Ariza, Upt Ribcracker, Ethereal Tomb Reaver, or Breath of the Dying are awesome to use because they have a lot of increased attack speed solely on the weapon base itself. That's kind of what distinguishes the Fury Druid from other melee builds, is that uh, the top tier weapon choices are very unique. The second key point that I want to discuss is the fact that Fury itself is an interruptible attack. So it's not a clone of the skill Zeal for the Paladin. You can be interrupted like midway through your animation, so it's very important to stack a lot of FHR because if you're going to be interrupted, you want to quickly recover from that animation and then start attacking again. Fortunately, the Fear Druid has amazing FHR breakpoints, so you get a really good return for the amount of FHR that you stack. So kind of like the opposite of an Amazon has horrible FCR breakpoints where Diablo creators decided to give the Fear Druid amazing FHR breakpoints. And they kind of work well with each other with the fact that a lot of your attacks can be interrupted. And kind of segueing into that, the third point that I want to discuss is that two-handed weapons are more preferable for the Fury Druid than one-handed weapons. And that is again tying into the fact of the Fury Druid has amazing FHR breakpoints and worse block rate recovery animation breakpoints. So you can actually find yourself if you're using a weapon like Grief and then using a Storm Shield that if you're surrounded, you'll actually be stuck in a block animation where you can't even get out of it. So in my opinion, it's much better off running a two-handed weapon, taking that hit if you're thrown into recovery animation, quickly getting out of that and then start attacking again versus kind of going a more defensive road of carrying a shield, being put into your slow block rate animation and then not being able to get out of that. It can actually be very frustrating with the fear to it. And the fourth and final point that I want to touch on is that this specific build is going to be all top tier budget, no expense spared gear. So for those that do want an example of a budget Fury Druid, I do have a previously made video. The link for it is in the description below. It is a much older video. I think we're going back almost two years on my channel. So quality level is a little bit less, but it's going to give you uh, an, an example of kind of some more budget options for the Fury Druid specifically. That's all the key components I want to talk about. So let's dive into the breakdown of this build. For this particular character build, I wanted to do something different with my attribute investment. So I went max strength, nothing into vitality, nothing in energy. And I think I might have a couple hard points into dexterity. I'm not quite sure. But between the Torch and Annie and the Raven Frost that I'm using, I might have had to add a few additional points. But for the most part, it's max strength to try and get as much damage as I possibly could out of this build. So I have a total of 567. Now, I have in previous streams done, I actually did Ubers with the Fury Druid, and I switched the gear around a little bit. I swapped out my gloves for uh, Drax to get the life tap, and then I went max vitality with just the bare minimum strength to equip my gear. 
And with that particular setup, I had just over 8,000 health, which is massively overkill for PVM. You definitely don't need anything really above like four to five. Even five is kind of getting a little excessive. So you can sort of invest your points depending on how you kind of want to tailor your build. So if you want 3,000 life, 4,000 or 5,000, you could go with something like maybe 300 points into vitality and then everything else into strength. But I wanted to do something different trying to kind of maximize the damage output. And with the gear, which I'll get into shortly, I have 72 fire res, 35 cold, 80 lightning, and 22 to poison. So going over the skill tree, we'll start off with elemental first. I don't have a single point into any of these skills. Now it is kind of interesting. You can use some skills like Armageddon when you're in werewolf form. So you can kind of make a build that's split like half melee, half elemental damage. It is a really cool build. The problem with going the route of using Armageddon while you're in uh, shape-shifting form is that it's really tough to kind of distribute your skill points because you want to put enough into the elemental tree to have decent damage but then you're taking a lot out of your potential for melee damage, overall health and duration that you're in shape-shifting form. So again it's kind of weighing the scales of how you want to build your fury druid but this one i have nothing in elemental because we're not taking that split approach for summoning i have one hard point into raven uh, one into summon spirit wolf one into oak sage uh, one into summon dire wolf and then one into summon grizzly grizzly is the meat shield and then i put all of my remaining points into heart of the wolverine after i max the shape shifting tree so if you want to boost your life and not additional damage you can max out oak sage but our little Wolverine does add a nice decent chunk of additional percent damage so we get 202 at level 27 and 207 to attack rating so it's a really nice supplement uh, to the build. For shapeshifting we maxed or I maxed excuse me lycanthropy and werewolf so lycanthropy is more duration and more total max life. Uh, werewolf is more attack rating and attack speed and it has a flat uh, life percentage boost. I maxed feral rage this is kind of a rock skill that the more you use it it builds up the the red like circle globe that goes around you and every successive hit boosts the faster run walk speed life steal and then adds additional damage and attack rating i really just use this to kind of buff up the life steal and faster run walk i don't uh, usually primarily rely on it as my main damage dealing spell or my main damage dealing attack excuse me that's where fury comes into play um, i just have one hard point into rabies and then i maxed out fury uh, five hits at level 29, 246% uh, attack bonus, and 576% total damage bonus. So it's a huge damage output, and it's one of the reasons why I think this is one of the most underrated melee builds. Um, but yeah, that covers the attribute investment, why I chose to invest my attribute points the way that I did, and kind of how I broke down my pure melee focused skill tree. So now we'll dive into the gear and then gameplay. One of my favorite things about the Fury Druid is the gear that you use is different than your typical meta melee character in D2. So starting off with the weapon, I'm using Rib Cracker. This one is upped with a 15 IS 91 to attack rating jewel. Uh, Rib Cracker has a lot of other really nice stats. A uh, 50 FHR, which we mentioned is very important. This is actually an 86 FHR build, which I believe is two frames per recovery animation, or it might be three. But again, it kind of goes along that line of what we talked about, taking a hit, recovering, and then just going right back instead of using a shield and being block locked. But yeah, it's got 50 crushing blow, dexterity, additional damage to undead. Now I paired that with Jalal's. This one I have, uh, I think it's a strength attack rating jewel, nothing too special. There's definitely room for improvement. But I really love using this helmet on a shapeshifting druid. I mean, it gives me a total of four shapeshifting skills, 30 FHR, bonus attack rating, uh, strength, uh, resistances. It's just an all around solid helmet. You can use G Face, that's a really good, you know, your traditional meta melee uh, helmet to use a deadly strike, crushing blow, strength, and FHR. But one thing that I don't think a lot of people realize about the shapeshifting druid specifically is those plus two to shapeshifting skills and plus two to druid skills that really gives you a lot of benefits right so it's increasing the plus life from lycanthropy uh, more attack rating and werewolf form it's going to increase your faster run walk and lifesteal and damage and attack rating on feral rage and it's going to increase the overall 
attack rating and damage percentage on Fury. So the plus skills are actually a lot more valuable for this build than say your kind of standard like Frenzy Barb or Zealer, right? They're very important, that's why I went with Jalal's. Uh, the Amulet, High Lords, um, the Wendall skills, Lightning Res and Deadly Strike. The 20 IS isn't too beneficial, which we talked about earlier. A Fortitude, one of the few builds that's not Enigma. We went with Fortitude for that raw damage, uh, maximum Lightning Res, resistance, everything that we love about Fortitude from melee characters. Uh, Gore Riders, or the boots, kind of your standard boot that everybody uses on melee builds, Crushing Blow, Deadly Strike, Open Moons, and Faster Run Walk. I paired that with, this is a perfect Raven Frost. I found this on a human bot. This is not an edited Raven Frost, just 100% perfect. Uh, paired that with a dual each strength uh, quad res ring. Uh, for the belt, string of ears, just damage reduction and life stolen per hit. And then laying of hands for our gloves for the massive fire resistance and increased 350% increased damage to demons. Then on switch, I have a CTA and a spirit. I think this is, mandatory for a max strength build i think if you're not using max strength like you can have 3k 4k life without cta so you can actually use something else on switch like the harmony rune bird uh, the bow for faster run walk or something for that vigor aura the thing that's a little bit annoying though about cta is you cannot cast it when you're in werewolf form you can recast your summons if they die but to rebuff yourself with cta you need to first transform out of werewolf form then buff yourself up and then transform back. So it's a little bit of an annoyance, but uh, it is what it is. And then for the inventory, I have my very best max damage AR plus life grand charms and same with small charms with two FHR max damage AR small charms. So that's how I get the 86 FHR. We got 50 on Jalal, or sorry, 50 on Ribcracker, 30 on Jalal's, and then the 10 there. That gives me 90, we actually only need 86, and then Torch and Annie. Now for the weapon choices for the mercenary, it depends on what you're running. I'm currently for this build video, I'm just using a treachery, a kind of placeholder, a crown of thieves for a life leech. And then I'm using pride actually. Now you guys might be like, whoa, 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 whoa. You need to use reaper's tool. Now I think it depends on the player's difficulty that you're farming. Cause you need to remember, I don't have enigma to reposition my mercenary, right? So. I think on anything from players one up to players three, I think pride is better. If you run into a physical immune, skip it, but we all know that mercenary AI, like they're just really dumb, right? So at least if he's off in the distance doing his thing, like being an idiot, you're gonna still get the benefit from the concentration aura, right? Which it's not a problem with like a casting character or Enigma because you can reposition him right on top of somebody to proc to crap from Reaver's Toll, but you don't have that luxury when you're in werewolf form. So that's the reason why I went with it, but you can absolutely rock an Ethereal Reaper's Toll, which I will do half of this chaos run with Pride, and then we'll do the other half with an Eth Reaper's Toll. Let me find it. Here it is, sorry. Eth Reaper's Toll. This is, it's best for pure damage. It's just really dealing with the dysfunctionality of mercenary AI. Uh, but I would recommend it for player seven. It just depends on where you're farming and uh, what your goals are. But if you're gonna run Reaper's Tool, then you might want to run something like Fortitude and Indaro's Visage or something, that's up to you. But Pride itself has such low damage that I don't think it really matters what you're using. So I went with Treachery for a little bit more of a defensive approach if he procs Fade, his res is capped out and uh, lots of DR. Again, it's really up to you. But uh, yeah, that's everything that I really wanted to cover in terms of gear and important points to take note of. So we'll do an example players three chaos sanctuary run and we'll do half of it with pride and then the other half will switch and show you guys uh, reaper's toll just so that you guys see me setting the player's difficulty players three now one thing that i forgot to mention is that it's better to cast your summons do your cta buff and then transform into werewolf form on your cta hand because you get the plus one to all skills from cold arms and then plus two from spirits so that gives you again plus three total transforming to werewolf and then relaying back into the point that i talked to with the gear i mean plus four from something like jalal's right plus three is plus seven that's how that plus skills makes a big difference with uh, this particular melee character so there's our summon our bear both ctas 
your debuffs, and then we switch to Werewolf, and then make sure you swap back your main hand. You'll notice a big attack speed difference if I'm using CTA versus Ribcracker. I use Feral Rage on my right click. That's that glowing orb that you see spinning around, and that's what allows me to run so quickly. And that's a nice, another, another nice overlooked point, I think, about the Fury Druid, is that people forget the, like how quickly you can actually move. You're not really... Obviously, Enigma is best for getting around. No one's denying that, but it's kind of the next best thing, having really faster run walk. It's almost like your bow is on, but you're running around doing tons of melee damage. And the Mercenary is kind of sticking with us a little bit, which I'm surprised. Another thing too is I think that that staff, just like the cracking noise, is like the coolest thing ever on a melee build. You can see how much I slow down when I don't have Feral Rage fully procced. And I should also show you guys... So I have 7,705 to 14,000 Feral or Fury damage and then 6.4 to 10k uh, Feral Rage damage, so a lot of melee damage. You can actually get the numbers even higher with something like Breath of the Dying or an Ethereal uh, Tomb Reaver, but I've um, only ever found two F Tomb Reavers and they were one one open socket and two open sockets, so two huge rips and um, I haven't quite yet pulled the trigger on Breath of the Dying, but this is what I meant about the Mercenary being stupid. There's no way to bring him over, so if I was using Reaper's Toll, Kind of shit out a lot, but at least I still get the concentration aura benefit from him being out there. I think my CTA wore off because... Looks like my life dropped a little bit. Oh, maybe not. But that's, you can kind of see it's a little bit tedious transforming to your druid form and then using your CTA buff and then going back. But uh, yeah, it's totally... Not mandatory, we took a little bit of damage there, amp damage. We don't have the max block of the Zealer. It's one of the downsides to going the two-handed weapon route. And we lost our bear too. But the bear we can recast uh, in werewolf form, so it's not too bad. As long as you're not getting completely surrounded, just mowing stuff over. I mean, that might be the one reason people like really prefer the Zealer, just more tanky, max block. You don't have to kind of worry about getting completely surrounded. But I mean, also, regardless of whatever melee character you are, just having amp damage on you, like players three or sevens, not good either. So there he's physical immune. Actually, that might be a good time to... We'll go back to town, which... Oh no, I can't. I don't have... Oh, major fail. Don't have a TP, TP scrolls with this setup. That's okay. We'll just have to drop one to show you guys Reaper's Tool. There we go. Swap his weapon out. He will do a lot more damage. Again, just dealing with mercenary. AI can be a little bit annoying. Impossible. Impossible. I can't. can't. Do it now? There you go. Put that to good use. I should probably repair my equipment while I'm at it. What do we need? So as soon as that decrep procs, we'll be doing even more damage. It takes care of physical immunities. Uh, 
I would just definitely, in most scenarios, I would just avoid use. I think, I just think it's better to go with what runs easier. But if you're like bail running or something, definitely Reaper's totally better in that scenario. Get the Feral Rage Filly product, and look at that, just running like a champ. The other thing too, in regards to kind of maybe looking a little bit squishy when I have the amp damage, this is, I am like forcefully putting myself at a disadvantage in terms of survivability from running 2k health instead of like easily getting like 5k, but I really wanted to just maximize the damage to show this guy completely wound out. That always debuffing can get a little annoying. I'm gonna take it to Sace first. Did not work out well. That'd be the one guy that could probably take you out super quickly with Amp. Alright, so. We cast Art of the Wolverine. It's probably painfully slow compared to if you're expecting caster build speed. I think any melee build painfully slow. Just a huge lack of AOE. Still a super fun build though. And I think the fact that you can run like versatility in terms of how much health and strength you want to invest, your summons. You can even have like 5k Armageddon raining down meteor damage, like elemental supplement for a little bit extra AoE. It's just a really all around like underrated melee character, I think. Your final little free buff. I will say though, like if, if your mercenary is with you, oh we lost our spirit again. If your mercenary is with you and he casts the crap from Reaper's Toll, there's absolutely it's absolutely more damage than pride. I just really like to prefer to use pride if I just hate the mercenary AI. That's the way I can put it. On Diablo! Boom. Players. I was only players three. I could have gone up to players seven. But yeah, guys, that's um, everything that I wanted to talk about. We did discuss some alternative weapons, some different ways you can kind of tailor this build to your liking. I do think it is a highly undervalued and underrated melee build, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys would change the gear around or if you would tweak anything differently. Or, I mean, just let me know if you hate the Fury Dude in general. But uh, that's everything for today's video. And I'll see you guys on my next Diablo stream or video. Peace out. Yeah.